guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to talk about a case that you've probably at least heard of or you've at least heard the name Kevin Bacon. No, not the actor. But this case is frankly terrible like every other case, but it specifically troubles me because cannibalism troubles me. So that's what we're in for today, so prepare yourself, I suppose. Police. Gruesome details emerge in death of missing Michigan man. A Michigan man has been arraigned in the murder and mutilation of a 25-year-old man who was found dead on December 28th. Kevin Bacon's body was found in Mark Latunsky's home in the 700th block of West Tyrell Road in Bennington Township, a half hour west of Flint. He was hanging naked from the ceiling, according to WILX News 10. Latunsky, 50, was arraigned December 30th on one count of open murder and one count of disinternment slash mutilation of a dead body, according to the 66th District Court documents. He admitted to killing Bacon of Swartz Creek by stabbing him with a knife in the back one time, then slitting his throat. Latunsky allegedly told authorities that he hung Bacon from the ceiling's rafters by tying a rope around his ankles. Latunsky also allegedly admitted to cutting off Bacon's testicles with a knife and eating them. On the day of his arraignment, Latunsky did not appear in the court. Instead, he was arraigned on video. WILX reported the man on the video said he was not Mark Latunsky. He said his name was Edgar Thomas Hill and that Mark Latunsky was his nephew. District Court Judge Ward L. Clarkson ignored his response and continued the arraignment. He ordered Latunsky held without bond. The police have definitely identified who he is. They've dealt with him in the past and this is the same person they arrested on site and he has not left their custody at all, Bacon's father, Carl Bacon, told WILX. This is exactly why Dave dating apps scare me because I genuinely believe that if Ted Bundy were alive today, he'd be using dating apps because in a way it's easy and convenient because you can get someone to meet you, you can build trust, you can usually probably coax someone to meet you relatively quickly. I have a number of friends who I always yell at for doing this, but they'll meet someone and the next day they'll go out with them or give them their number immediately and I'm like, please don't do that. The sad thing is even the people who come off as normal, even the people who you get to know for longer periods of time, can end up being like this. And that's not me trying to scare you, it's just a reality that we need to deal with, that even people who, you know, take their time with you aren't necessarily worth trusting. In terms of Latunsky, I don't know how the police dealt with him before in the sense of I don't know what crime he got caught for or was in trouble for, but what worries me is it's hard for me to believe that Latunsky just did this for the first time on a whim. I mean, I hope that there aren't other victims, but at the same time, it's just very hard for me to believe that someone would just kill someone strategically, hang them upside down, and then cut off parts of their genitalia to eat. That doesn't seem like something you would just do. It seems very zero to a hundred. So I wouldn't be surprised if he had committed similar, but maybe less drastic crimes that stopped him from getting caught maybe. Hey guys, it's editing me. So I actually did a background check on Latunsky and honestly, nothing massive came up. He has a couple of speeding tickets. He's not on the sex offender registry, though there's a very suspicious amount of sex offenders right around where he lives. That's alarming. But aside from that, there's no crime noted. Now that doesn't mean he hasn't done anything else, but it's not noted. Platunsky was appointed a public defender. Probable cause hearing is set for Wednesday at 8.15 a.m. followed by a pretrial on January 14th at 2 p.m. Bacon's roommate Michelle Myers told police he went to meet Latunsky on December 24th after connecting with him on Grindr, a dating app for gay, bi, trans, and queer people. His family reported him missing on December 25th. This is not the first time Latunsky has had a run-in with law enforcement. Latunsky's neighbor, Michael Parks, told WILX he has seen odd behavior before. Police responded to an incident on November 25th when a 29-year-old man wearing nothing but a leather kilt and blood on his face ran from Latunsky's home. However, the man did not want to press charges. According to court documents, Latunsky was charged in 2013 for custodial kidnapping. However, those charges were dismissed after several competency hearing according to WILX. Latunsky's estranged husband, Jamie Arnold, spoke out after he found out about Bacon's death. He told WJRT that he became a target on social media after the incident even though he left Latunsky months ago. Arnold was accused of being an accomplice. I had to get out of there. I knew it was a dangerous situation for me to be in, he said. So I actually found another article that for some reason only pops up if you use his middle name, which is David, that kind of goes through other disturbing things that he's done that make him even more suspicious. So here it says, he believes he's named someone else. He believes he's from a royal family out of Wales, the Thomas clan, said Doug Corwin 
the Shiawassee County public defender assigned to Latunsky's case. Corwin explained to a judge Wednesday morning in court that a psychological evaluation is vital before the case moves forward. The judge granted his request. Looking through past court cases, ABC 12 found this will be the fifth time Latunsky has been court ordered to undergo testing and then treatment. Back in 2010, Latunsky was also admitted to Memorial for Depression with the diagnosis of paranoid schizophrenia and borderline personality traits. Court documents support that diagnosis. In his ex-wife's plea to prevent Latunsky from having any contact with her children, she made a number of claims. She explained that Latunsky thought at one point she tried to poison his well and she wrote that Latunsky claimed his boss wanted him to tamper with the products he was designing. He was later fired from that job. I knew there was something not right, that his thinking something was wrong, that there was some kind of delusional paranoid delusional, Jamie Arnold said. He would say that the neighbor was contaminating our water, that his children were not his children, his family was not his biological family, that I was some leader of some gray green eyed people, that the world was going to turn upside down, Arnold said. And then there's also a tweet uh, of Jeffree Star. To me, it's absolutely wild that a man ran out basically naked with blood on himself and even though he wasn't pressing charges it would it surprises me that the police didn't think to look into that because you know maybe it's a pattern of behavior maybe there are other things being hidden listen i don't know how the law works i don't know what you need to get a warrant to get into someone's house i don't know what qualifies as probable cause but at the same time that's so alarming to me that this happened and they just kind of were like eh then it says several celebrities commented on bacon's death youtube star and makeup guru jeffrey star donated twenty thousand dollars to his funeral after finding finding out Bacon was a big fan. The actor Kevin Bacon also posted condolences about his death due to the similarities in their name. So on another article, I thought this was interesting. Kevin Bacon's roommate, her last name is Myers. Uh, she described her slain friend as a colorful, vibrant being both inside and out. He did what he wanted to, when he wanted to, and let very little hold him back. He was attentive and could remember all the small details, even the ones that you forgot. I thought that was really nice because I personally appreciate people who remember the small details because I tend to think that they're the most caring ones because they'll remember like a small thing you've said and you'll be like, wow, I cannot believe you remember that. So interestingly, Latunsky describes himself as a self-employed chemist on his LinkedIn profile. He reportedly has a history of mental health issues and was charged for custodial kidnapping in 2013. As we know, those were later dismissed. While investigators say there is no evidence to support the notion that Latunsky is a serial killer, they are investigating the possibility. There are missing persons cases throughout the state, said Kaiser, told MLive. We don't know that we could link any of those to our suspect. This doesn't appear to be a serial person. Listen, I don't know if he's a serial killer. However, there is at least a little bit of a pattern of behavior because the other man who ran out of his house wearing next to nothing bleeding, I don't know what they were doing. Of course, I wasn't there, but at the same time, I think if we had to guess, I would probably guess something sexual in nature and just brought it too far. I don't necessarily want to say BDSM, but something of more extreme sexually and it goes too far. Maybe someone revokes consent, but he doesn't really care about that. That's just my opinion, but it does seem like there's at least somewhat of a pattern here. So I really hope they don't end up brushing that off. I don't know if he's a serial killer, but like I said before, I just don't know who would just wake up one day and do this without having done anything prior. You know what I mean? I'm not saying he's killed people before necessarily, but I wouldn't be surprised if he had other stories with other men where they like ran away from him or where he had acted inappropriately or in extreme fashions. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think this guy is a repeat offender? Do you think he's killed? Do you think he's done other maybe sexually inappropriate things? Let me know. Also, let me know what you think about the cannibalism part because it's just dropped in there. And part of me thinks they're dropping it in there for the sensationalist kind of thing of like, oh my God, he was a cannibal. But at the same time, that too, I don't know if someone would just wake up and be like, I'm gonna do this today, you know? Like, I feel like there has to be kind of a bit of a buildup. Then again, we've seen cases where people just kind of lose it, so I might be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always, and let's get right into the fan art.